My name is Dean Neal and I'm head coach at the very successful Pro One Goal Kick Academy based here in England. This is my tutorial channel to help improve your talents and your development as a goalkeeper. Enjoy. Okay, so the first thing we're looking to do is hold the set position. And with one, just like the one step dive, we're looking to approach the ball with the nearest foot. So for example, if we're going to ball one, the nearest foot will be the goalkeeper's right foot. So from there, with one step, can we quickly coordinate the one step there? Okay, and then ball to the nearest foot being the left, holding the set position, stepping two. Okay, on this technique, we must turn the foot so we get the biggest part of the foot, the side, in. As the side foot reaches, notice the knee comes down to create more mass. More mass, there. So as we're stepping in, there. We've created a little bit more mass, similar to the long barrier. Now, an extra coaching tip. If this foot is not 90 degrees and step 45, we're not creating much mass. We're creating an angle where the ball can divide and slip through there. So it's very important we get 90 degrees on the turn of the foot. So in to create the mass and the block. So in there, one, ball two, there. Back up ball two, there, and back in. So let's have a little go with that. Notice Tim here has gone to the line of the ball, the biggest part of the foot. We're looking to aim for the center of the ball. This is important because if the foot is off center, the ball can trickle over the toes or come inside through the legs. Now this is a pure reaction save. So we're looking for one nearest or two. So let's go again, Tim. Two. Good. One. Freeze it there. Good. Okay, notice another detail. We've kept the mass up here. Hands are high. Keep the mass. Because if the ball does elevate, we can bring these hands in to be effective. So every time, maintain your discipline coming in. Create the mass. This will be the mass up here and the body barrier there. So the foot's leading and if the foot does patrol up or elevate, we've got double protection there. So good, Tim, well done. Good. Good. Okay, so this is a major detail of saving with the feet. Please try and practice this and get this as consistent as you can. Now, pay attention. When leading in with the foot, notice the ball is there, so I'm using it as a profile. When leading with the foot, if the foot is not 90 and goes 45 there and we go in, you can still see the pathway of the ball. The foot creates a passage for the ball to go over. So statistically, probably four to five out of 10, we're gonna be consistent with the foot. But, however, we're still liable for that mistake with the foot at 45 degrees. Now notice this, 45, now watch what happens when the foot goes 90. 90 degrees, watch, we step in, the ball's now blocked. Because what the foot will miss, the ankle and the lower calf will bring over as the barrier as we step in to create the mass. So again, watch, I'll come up at 45, in, we can still see a major part of the ball. Slightly another 45, so we're 90, in, we've got the block, okay? What you'll find is this is a very fast reaction, and we know, but this is something you have to just consistently work on the training field, getting the foot in at 90. Okay, when using the feet in the game, the reason we're using the feet, because we're in a dead zone. The thinking time has reduced, so much we can't use the hand, so we have to use more of a natural movement, which is the feet. Now in this technique, it's the step forward. Now here comes the sports science side of things. When we step in from one, and we kill that position there with the mass, our weight is times by two. So if you weigh eight stone, this is gonna produce 16 stone of force, compression and making contact with the ball. Therefore, the ball should hit distance and not dribble in front. Now, it's very common for keepers to not step in to attack the line. A lot of goalkeepers go side. If we go side, we're not producing the sports science. So we're just producing the eight stone of weight instead of the 16 stone. Now, 
I'm full aware sometimes it is a reaction we just get the feet out but we're looking to get things as consistent as we can so in one there that's the point that's the sport science the contact there two keep the mass make the contact that's a very important tip oh, man. mistake for that ball to just drift through the legs. Now this is how we create that. Tim, it's important that you match the side of the foot with the center of the ball. So therefore we must keep contact of the ball until it hits the foot. So step in. We're looking for the ball to hit the biggest part of the foot, the side area. So Tim's just gone a little bit too quick then on his reactions. Took his half the ball slightly and it's cost us through there. Yep. Yep. It's the mass Tim's creating still here. So even though he's confident the ball's hit the foot and the foot's hit the ball made contact, we're still creating the mass. So please keep consistency. Don't drop the shoulder or turn or be brought into the ball. Keep the mass. When should we be using our feet in a game situation? The most common way to use our feet is when we find ourselves in what we call the goalkeeping dead zone. The dead zone is when you're just out of position and the brain has less time to think and produce the reaction to the save. So for example, if Tim is set to slightly back there, he's not in a good position for a one-on-one -on -one and he's not in a good position to take the strike because we need distance. Distance gives us time to think and the brain to make the eye-to-hand coordination reaction save okay so if we was in this game situation we're almost like a one-on-one -on -one, tim now the english syllabus will tell tim to do tim how would you defend this good excellent hands low like a one-on-one -on -one. ready for the hands to react to so coming in for the striker if we can to make the save okay the problem with this and this is one of my modern day goalkeeping techniques is now we're set hands low look at the mass the mass being the top of the goal now if the striker's ball elevates there, Tim's gonna have trouble reacting to that with the height because he's committed so low on the one-on-one. -on -one. So let's just change and flip the coin and give you something to think about. Okay, so we're in the dead zone. So there's, we know as a goalkeeper, there's less time to react. So now Tim, if you set normal for me, good. Tim's set position, now he's defended the mass. Okay. Now, if this ball elevates quickly from a short distance in the dead zone, we can use those hands up, up, up to defend. Now we have the mass defended. Now we can use a more natural movement. We can use the feet. Because if the striker goes low from here, we can now defend the goal and the zones with the correct feet. Excellent, fantastic tip. Now, Go to the beginning of the video. Remember what we said about the foot being 90 degrees because we create the mass with the upper ankle and lower calf. Notice the ball took an awkward bounce that elevated there. Tim actually used this part of the leg to defend it. So that's why it's important to get that 90 degrees on to shield and make that barrier. Okay, now I'm gonna progress and develop the decision making. We've practiced that technique. Now we're gonna make sure his decision making is working a little bit better. So I'm not gonna tell Tim. I'm gonna serve the balls high or low. Now he as a goalkeeper has to react to the best of his ability, whether to use the feet or the hands. We're just now progressing that decision making. <laughs> Okay, learning techniques, especially at Tim's age of 19, 20, is always quite difficult. So what we're gonna do now is go back to what you've been taught. We'll go hands low. So in the dead zone, hands low, and let's compare this with what we've just been doing. Okay, so Tim has just executed two different techniques. One being effective with the feet, and won the old traditional English style with hands low. So Tim, how did you find the difference between the first and second technique? The, se the second one's more difficult. Cause more difficult. So you've got to get so low, and then anything higher, it kills you. Yeah, yes, yeah, brilliant, almost. Because, because we're so low, we find ourselves with no reaction time. We're in a dead zone already, remember. 
Now when that ball elevates, we're now creating that movement because it's hard to step in because the hands are out. They're not in there, they're low. So that movement, the back arches. How did you find the first? First one, it was easy because you knew if it was low, you went feet. And then if it was going high, you, you was already set high so you could get there. But your feet were low, so you don't have to, because I'm tall, I struggle to get right down. Fantastic point. Because Tim is tall, this is how I would coach the taller keepers to be effective. Now, I know, for example, when I was playing, I was quite quick with my hands. So what worked for me was to go hands low. But with these tall lads, we have to individually work them and show them that we can use our feet by being more effective. Okay, so with this modern day goalkeeping technique, what we've done is we started off as a technique, explain the technique to Tim, then we've turned it into a skill where he has to make a decision on two options, whether to use the feet or hands using that new set position and trying to be effective with the feet. So mentally we're challenging Tim and exercising him on his decision making. Now, because it was a mistake ball, we want to turn it into a game related situation. So now we're going to get Tim moving across the goal. Now on this point, Tim, you have to find the correct position. So you have to move from one cone, find the correct position to get in line with me and then take the strike. Whether it's going to go high or low, Tim doesn't know, it's your decision. So now we're getting the body moving and the decision making comes a little bit harder. Okay, so let's analyze that technique. Let's start from stage one. Stage one, discipline, set position because we don't know if it's going high or low. We're in a dead zone with less time to think, so we have to be disciplined in our technique. Stage two, keep the foot 90 degrees to create the mass and the barrier. Stage three, keep the mass upper body. In case the ball elevates, then we've got double protection in case that ball does. Make sure the first step is attacking the line of the ball. We're looking to make contact at the biggest part of the foot, the side, so the sports science kicks in and our weight is times by two. So upon contact, the ball will travel. Show me, Tim. Good, so the step forward is important. The step into the ball, discipline, keep the mass upper body, just in case the ball does. Stage six, discipline in the set position, Use what comes naturally to you as a goalkeeper. What you'll probably find a lot of taller guys are more effective with the feet, a lot of shorter goalkeepers, a more lower centre of gravity can use the hands. Practice both techniques, the hands low and protect the mass. My overall evaluation of this is the game's changed. Balls move more frequently now. More goals are scored, Boots are designed to make the balls move. We have to create a more natural decision making using our whole bodies, whether it be hands, forearms, shoulders, or feet, to progress in today's game of football. Tim, thank you very much. Happy viewing.